Okay, the same problem. Find out when the cumulative cases of AIDS reaches a million, but I'm going to do this problem graphically now. So I've copied the equation over to the graph menu. And now what I'm going to do is, just like we did with the uh, polynomial solver, we had to set it equal to zero. Well, I'm going to do that here too. I'm going to subtract off the million. This was the equation that was listed right here. 10,583.5, 10,583.5, and a whole bunch of more digits. Then just like we did before, we have to subtract off the million, and I'm going to do that. And now this thing is ready to uh, be graphed. Make sure you have the correct number of zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six zeros there. Before I even graph it, let's um, take a look at the table. So let's go, um, let's make sure our table is set correctly. I'll do second window to see if the table is set. Let's start it at zero. And we'll just check every whole number, make that pitch there one. And now let's do the table, second graph. And looking at values around here, just to see um, uh, where we are. I'm scrolling through here. I see that these are like negative a million. This is negative 90, 960,000 and so on. And uh, it's going up here. But uh, eventually we want to see where it crosses the axis. And it crosses somewhere between 21 and 22. And if we back it up, we might see the same thing. So I might set my viewing window a little bit. Let me do that. And uh, what I'm going to do is make my Y min. Well, I noticed that it crossed. Uh, uh, some, let's go back up to the X's. I noticed that it, that it went from negative to positive somewhere around 22. So you could go farther than that if you wanted to, maybe 30. And same way with your, negative, your X's, X min's, maybe negative 30 because I noticed that it, it took a good while for it to uh, uh, go from negative to positive. What we're looking for now is a root since it's set equal to zero. The y mins and y maxes, we could leave it be what it is right here if you wanted to because really we're just looking for the roots. If you wanted to go farther with that just so you can see more of the graph, that's fine. Maybe I'll go negative uh, 1,000 to 1,000. But, uh, whoop. Let's go back into that a second. Negative, I think I hit the minus sign by accident. Negative 1,000 to 1,000. And that really isn't, you don't have to do that. Let's go ahead and graph it. And what we're looking for is the x-intercepts. Like here's an x-intercept, and there will be one right there. Because after all, we already know the answers. They're at negative 17 and another one's at 21. Now to get those roots just like we did before we can do second trace and we want to find a zero, choice two, zero and let's get to the left, let's work on this one let's get to the left of this one. Right now it says the x is at zero here zero way down here because we're looking at the x and y so we'll have to get to the left so let's arrow to the left till we see that little cursor uh, across that uh, axis there and get to the left hand side. We can also notice that our y values, we want them to go positive. We want to be on the left side of this. So we want the y values to go positive. And I think they did, but they did it so fast. See, since our, our viewing window is, is so tight, we can barely see it. Let's, let's zoom out, or let's just change the viewing window and go a little bit higher and lower here one second. Let's go actually negative a million. That's the problem with doing these graphically is that uh, you really have to uh, zoom out there to see it. Actually zooming out doesn't help too much because that changes your x's and your y's. You have to change your viewing window really. So um, let's go negative a million to positive a million so we can see that cursor go by. And let's graph it one more time. Now we can see more of the graph rather than just two lines flowing down. So now let's get the um, root or zero, choice two. And now we can see it a little bit, a lot better actually. Let's get to the left of the first root. It's showing on the graph. Hit enter. Get to the right of the next root, of this root. Hit enter. Hit enter again. And we should get that 
answer of negative 17.35. And you could do the same thing with this root. The only problem is, is that you would have only had two roots when there's actually three. Remember, the, there, there's another one at negative 920. Now, how could I know that by looking at this graph? Well, after all, this is a cubic, so it should, could have a min and a max. So if I uh, realize that, then I would realize that I'd have to go farther out. Uh, maybe, it's a, it, it, to be truthful, it is much easier to use that poly simult application or the poly program if, if you don't have that application to solve it like I did earlier. Uh, because it really takes a good bit of adjusting your viewing window. Like I'd have to go way out there, and, I, and you may not know how far to go to the left, but I'll... I'll go out to negative 980 just to uh, show you that it does cross the axis here, again, way out here. And uh, we're not going to see too much more, maybe, than here's the other part of the graph. And so it's going real high here and then coming back down here. So uh, then we'd have to get this last uh, x-intercept here. So that's the graphical way. It is difficult, especially on this problem where the roots are so far apart.